So as I already said, I want to give you a little overview about what we are doing. But first of all, I would like to um, give you a little bit about information. Um, there are other partners which might be interesting for you when you are founding a company here in Berlin, like the Chamber of Commerce and Industry, or there's a designated website for founding something in Berlin. It's called Gründen in Berlin. They really have got some useful information also in English. Then I guess uh, some of you are already familiar with Social Economy Berlin because they are situated at the Impact Hub as well. Um, it's a funded program from the state of Berlin and they can help you if you're founding a company and you're thinking about going into the social sector. They've got some useful information and they're working together with some other consulting companies who can give you advice on that. Then you may have heard about the business plan Wettbewerb. Um, they have a lot of workshops, also some of them in English where you can find some information about funding a company as well. So when you founded your company and then you start growing with your company, that's where we come in, Berlin Partner, and we can give you advice on that, but also the Investitions Bank when it comes to funding options or financing options. And if you want to go international, there's also the Enterprise Europe Network, a uh, network funded by the European Commission, and Berlin Partner is also part of it. So, but now, as I said, I would like to tell you a little bit about general hints, advice on what you have to consider when you apply for public funding. So there are three levels uh, where you can get the money from. It's the funding agencies on the regional level, like in Berlin level. There's mostly the Investitionsbank Berlin, IBB Ventures, or the IBB Business Team, or also the Bürgschaftsbank Berlin or the Mittelständische Beteiligungsgesellschaft. Some other funding programs, which might be suitable, are uh, on national level, further with the Bundesregierung, or on European level from the European Union. So you always have to consider uh, where you want to go for. Most of the times I would start, say, uh, start with the regional level because there's not too much competition about it. Then you can go to the next level and the European level is quite difficult. There are also some options which might be suitable, but uh, first, when it's the first time you want to apply for um, public funding, regional level might be your first step. So then there are different instruments you can use. I guess most of you are looking for non-refundable grants, like you get the money and you do not have to pay all of it back. Like uh, depending on the funding rate, you get like 50% funding rate, 70%, sometimes even 100%. There are also tax subsidies, but there's also like low interest loans, grace periods, collaterals, guarantees, public equity or silent partnerships, which might also be an option. Like today we are uh, focusing more on non-refundable grants because I think for you, it's in your face right now, it's the most interesting one. What else do you have to consider when you apply for public funding? First of all, when was your company founded? Not all of the programs are open to all of the companies. Some of them are specially designed for young companies like startup companies, but there's not just one definition about a startup company. So you always have to look at the uh, rules which apply for the special program. Then you have to think about, is it a commercial or a non-profit enterprise? Because some of the programs aren't open for non-profit enterprises. And there are maybe some differences in the funding rules as well. Then um, what economic activity does the company pursue or is the project intend to pursue? Uh, I'll come back later for that. Sometimes like if you're a consulting company, you're not able to apply for special programs. Like a consulting company is just an example. It always depends on the NACE code. Or some of the programs are specially designed for digitalization projects. Some of them are going more into the research and development phase. So have a look at it and see what suits for your company and your needs right now. What's also interesting is you have to look about what funding have you already been used because there's a, a threshold. You're not allowed to go over that. It's called the de minimis rule, but I'd say something about that later on. Then um, some of you already heard about uh, like the definition from the European Union about small and medium enterprises. It's quite important when it comes to funding schemes because most of the programs are specially designed for small and medium enterprises. And this is uh, the definition about it is the number of employees have, has to be uh, below 250 and the turnover has to be below 50 million and or the balance sheet in euro has to be below 43 millions. That might not be so interesting for you right now, but when you grow and getting bigger, it might be interesting. And 
some of the problems make a difference between micro enterprises, small enterprises, and medium sized enterprises when it comes to the funding rate. In general, you can say the bigger the company, the lower the funding rate. So small and like micro enterprises can get more money out of the program than medium sized enterprises. But always look at the specific rules for the program. Something else you might uh, consider is, are you an autonomous company? So if the company fully belongs to you, no problem at all. If you sold some of the shares, but it's less than 25%, it's not a problem at all. If you sold more than 25%, we have to look at it more specifically because it could be a problem you're not counted as autonomous anymore. And when it comes to the definition of small or medium enterprise, the company you sold your shares to might be coming into for the definition as well. But we always have to look at it specifically, um, just that you keep it in mind that it makes, that you do not wake up and uh, get some bad news because you sold some of the shares and now you're not um, able to apply for the problem anymore. So something else which might be interesting is, as I already pointed out before, um, you have to think about if the economic activity is eligible for the funding program. Most of the times you have to look at the NACE code. So you can see um, some of the funding programs are not accept, like um, some of the companies are not able to apply for it. For example, transport or storage industry, power and water supply, financial services, consultancy or management consultancy, and some others. So have a look at the NACE code when you talk to some of the advisors for funding schemes or whatsoever. Um, you can check out if it's the right problem for you or not. Then, um, as I said before, you're not allowed to um, get as much money from the funding program as you want. There's a special rule, it's called the de minimis rule. That means if you look at three years from your company, like this year and the two years before, you are not allowed to exceed a threshold value of more than 200,000 euros. That's a special rule from the European Commission. And you can always have a look at the specific program to see if it's relevant for the de minimis rule or not. Uh, I guess Altium can tell you something about the programs he's going to point out, like programs on European level. Most of the time, the de minimis rule doesn't apply for it. I guess for most of the programs on a regional level, the de minimis rules apply. So sometimes you have to think about which program you want to you want to go on with. I mean, if you are lucky and you apply for some programs and um, you get a positive um, feedback for all of them, it is possible that you have to decide which problem you want to go on with because otherwise you would be over these 200,000 euros. Then my colleagues and I put together some, some general hints um, that came along when we talked to some of the startups. Um, so it's always a re reimbursement of costs. That means, first of all, you have to be able to pay the bills all by yourself, and then you can take them and bring them, for example, to the EBB, and you get like 50% of your bill of, of, of the account of, all of the, the money back. But first, you have to be able to pay the bill all by yourself. Then uh, do not bend. It means if the problem doesn't fit, don't try to, to fit in whatever it takes. Sometimes uh, another problem will come along which might fit better or, or don't waste too much time on it. Um, always, you always have to look out that the really problem really has to fit your needs right now. That's also one of the next hints, which means uh, prioritize. What is the next step for my company right now? And what are my funding needs? Sometimes when we do talk to startups, they, they think all of the problems sound really interesting and they would like to apply for all of them at once but they are just three or four people. So we say, take it slow, really consider about what you wanna do, and then perhaps focus on just one problem. Then if, if you get a, a positive feedback, you can go on with the project, and then maybe next year you can start with another problem, but don't try to do all everything at once. Um, something else is this first application, then the project. So after confirmation of the receipt of the application, the project may generally be started at the applicant's own risk. 
funding of a project that has already been started is not, not possible. And ask for help. It's just people behind the problems. You can come to us if you need just some general advice. You do not know which funding program will, will fit. Or you already write down your application and you have just one question about, I don't know, whatsoever. Just give us a call, write us an email, and we will try to help you. Also the people from the EBB or even national or European funding um, agencies. Then something else which might be interesting for you is um, my colleagues put together a little overview about funding programs, depending on which phase you're in right now. It's just some general advice. Um, maybe you're familiar with some of the programs. If not, you can have a look at them or just um, ask us if, if we want to go into more detail about special programs. But right now, we just focus on the, on the left side of the, of the slide. So Atiyam is going to tell you more about some programs on regional level. So I picked out um, one program on national and one on international level, which might be interesting for you. This one is called the Tax Incentives for Research. It's from the German government and it's, it's, it's a German law. It started like in January, 2020, which means if you are doing some research and development projects and you do not get any funding for it yet because double funding isn't allowed, you're able to get some of the money back. So it's also possible if you've already done some research and development, you can try to uh, get some of the money, especially the money from the personal costs back. It's a two-step application. So first of all, you have to go to the website of the certification body, Bescheinigungsstelle Forschungszulage. Um, you have to fill in some information about your company and the project, quite easy. And um, if they give you the okay, meaning you really did some research or development, um, you can go to the, um, the next step will be from the tax office. The payment offset with the profit tax is made through the tax office. So I don't wanna go into detail about this program, just think about it. Maybe you've already done some research and development, and it doesn't matter if it was basic research, industrial research, or experimental development. All of it is fundable, possible for funding. Yeah. Then another program, but it's more like the Champions League of all funding programs because it's targeting especially at deep tech, high risk startup scale up companies. It's the European Innovation Council Accelerator. Um, it's also much harder to apply for it. It's a three-step proposal. First, it's a short application. You are doing it over an AI platform, giving some information. You have to fill in some questions. It takes about, I don't know, a week to do so. You can always send in your application. Next step would be a full application, but you need like one or two months to do so. Most of the companies we know work with consultancy agencies. Uh, there will be a deadline three times a year. And if you're lucky, then you're invited to an interview in Brussels. So success rate is quite low, but the good part about it is that um, you can get up to 2.5 million grand. So this is something really nice. And you can also ask for equity, which goes up to 15 million euro but it's really going for the, for the future unicorns within Europe. Last but not least, I bought another program. I can't tell you a lot about it, but I thought it might fit your needs. But I just saw about it uh, today in the morning in the newsletter. It's called React with Impact, Promotion of Social Entrepreneurship. So as far as I understood right now, um, you as a company might, I um, don't know, you can apply for it and um, it's targeting for consulting and support services. Right now, there's going to be another call. Um, it says so there will be a further funding call for networking, cooperation and strengthening of public welfare oriented companies. But for the first step, the consulting and support services, right now you can apply for it if you want to give this consulting service to some other companies. You have to go to the link below, which says BMBK. In Focus, Gemeinwohlorientierte Unternehmen. You can find inform more information there. Um, but on the 20th of February, it's going to start that you can apply for this consulting services if, you're, if you need some of these services. But you can find more information on the website. I'm sorry, I can't tell you a lot about the program, but it's just started and I couldn't read into it too much. 